Hello Europe, it's William calling from Weebie Blogs in London, and today I'm joined by my fellow blogger Patrick in Austria, and we are super excited to be speaking to Berlin-based producer Eric Mackel, who is one half of the German group Fahrenheit, who will of course compete in the final of Unser Song für Österreich with two songs, Frozen Silence and Mother Earth. Hello Eric! Hello! <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for having me. We're having some technical issues, but we've got your photo on the screen, which is good enough for us. So I guess just as a starting point, could you tell us about the background? Um, how did you and Andreas come together to form Fahrenheit? Oh, actually, oh, you know, we've, uh, we've known each other for, for years, actually. We, we started, you know, very, you know, classic uh, in, a, in a school band. You know, we know each other from school. So we we started you know making music from the very you know from the very early days and um, yeah we we started you know doing our own projects our own music but you know we went more and more into writing and producing for producing for other artists and um, yeah this went on and on and we were quite quite uh, had some decent um, some decent uh, successes and uh, yeah we we got by very well. But there was there was a point, you know, when we thought like we weren't actually doing what we wanted, but but always trying to serve other artists, which was which was great and which is still great and and it's a lot of fun doing that. But um, yeah, we kind of got lost, you know, in 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 in, in the music work. Actually, it, it at a certain point it felt just just like work and not like having fun anymore, you know, like like the early days when you start making music you you know want to have fun you want to have a good time and we kind of lost that a little bit and uh, when we when we started Fahrenheit it was like maybe one one year ago it it it, it was the first time that it that it felt like um you know like the early days again you know and you know we were looking for some 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 escape opportunity and uh you know we are not you know uh, so we don't have so much time to to spend, you know, like vacation for months or for weeks, even, uh, um, um, you know, outside the studio. So we tried to find a way to get this vacation feeling and also this this fun of making music, you know, getting all this and cramping it, you know, or kind of you know, getting it into to the music again, you know, and this is how, how, it, how it all started. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, I would say it was a little bit like a, like a little catharsis for us as well, you know, to um, to to do that. Nature inspires a lot of your work together. Uh, how do nature and music relate to each other, and what inspires you about that connection? Um, I think um, was yeah, it's hard to explain because um, you know when when you're when you're out in nature, you know, like in the really untouched wild, you know, it's 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 more about the feeling that you that you experience. You know, it's 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 hard to describe in words, but uh, what I found was interesting is when, when you're, you know, we're from Berlin and um, the city never sleeps, as uh, you know, as they say. And uh, you know, when you when the studio, there can be really quiet moments. You can just turn everything off and it's very quiet. But you know, when when you are in the mountains, you know, very untouched uh, wilderness, then there's also some 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 sort of silence. But this feels completely different and we try to capture that in music uh, which of course is difficult but we we kind of yeah we we tried that and we hope it it uh, connects with the people could you tell us about the female vocalist who you're working with on your songs mother earth and frozen silence yeah it's amanda actually she's she's danish i've I actually you know as it is nowadays i found her on the internet kind of <laughs> by chance and I was just just blown away by her performance and how she you know how she just uh, how how she sang how her voice sounded it was there was something innocent but also some something very um, how to say uh, very uh, very vulnerable you know and this it was uh, it sounded very modern but but not not in a, there are a lot of modern voices these days that that also feel very indie like you know like like these indie bands that are that we really like and we really appreciate those indie the indie scene you know all these indie bands that, that are out there and but she uh, she still had this this kind of um i would say commercial impact in her voice you know that connects with with 
with with a lot of people uh, as, at least with us and we hope that that other people can relate to that and and we just contacted her over Facebook and she might have thought like oh who are those guys you know stalking <laughs> on me <laughs> <laughs> but uh, eventually she she just came over and we started writing uh, right away so can you tell us a bit more about mother earth what's it about and uh, how would um and could you describe the songwriting process well uh, the song mother earth we we wrote with um with uh, with another uh, um, songwriter uh, and with an with a, another singer she's from tasmania actually um but she spent a lot of time in the uk as, as if i remember correctly fiora and uh, actually this was our first fahrenheit song actually and um it was very fresh you know when we started that song and we we didn't actually know how to do it right and and what's the right approach so we tried around a lot and um yeah um, we had this little um guitar guitar riff you know that that is playing and we build it build it up yeah, tried many different things. You know, we we let her sing different lines and different different rhythms, and um, had very uh, or a lot of different different parts. You know that um, not all of those parts made it into the song, so it was a little bit like a puzzle. I would say <laughs> hard to describe a, a writing process. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. What about Frozen Silence, your other competing entry? Oh yeah, that was uh, that was uh, more like a writing uh, process in like two phases, I would say. So we we had this we had this uh, piano uh, riff before, you know. This, this was something that we that, that Andres came up once uh, one time, and I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. And we, you know, when, when we come up with some piano lines or other riffs, we um, we re record them and we we keep them for later and and see if we can come up uh, w with a song you know that that um, that we can build up on and um, uh, when Amanda came over to Berlin so we we wrote another song this song was uh, Islands of White was the first song that we did and then uh, the next day we started this one we so we had this piano melody and we let her sing different different things and you just let, let her ramble a little bit <laughs> and. We always look for this little spark, you know, that we say, "Oh, whoa, wait, 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 what was that? Can can you remember that? Can can you can you sing that again?" And we record everything, you know, and then we then we see if we find those little little sparks, this little you know little moments, you know, that we um, then uh, build up on. Eric, were you yeah. were you nervous about meeting her for the first time? Because sometimes people sound one way on YouTube and a different way in person. <laughs> oh yeah, always, always like that. Whenever we meet with it's like it's but it's more like it's more like a, it's a bit exciting but but we've we've done it so many times actually so um it's 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 more like a positive nervousness i would say so um but but of course there 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 are a lot of things that can go wrong when you listen to someone on the internet and then maybe uh, it's completely uh different or can't deliver you know what what you're looking for <laughs> but um with that was uh, completely the contrary. She really, she really um, was was exactly what we were looking for. Of course, she was a little bit um, uh, she was a little bit shy in the beginning because we we were like, oh, can you sing this or can you sing that? The way we like to work with singers is like we let them sing whatever they can come up with, and we we stop them when we find something that is interesting or we find special. And uh, in the beginning, it was kind of I think it was kind of hard for her to um, just sing, you know, in front of two uh, two guys, you know, she just met. And so we had to kind of encourage her to really, you know, let it out, you know, just 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 sing and not sing, you know, in low volume, but really, you know, kick it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did one of the songs come to you more easily than the other one? Uh, yeah, I think so, but, but it's hard to remember right now. Um, because you know, whenever we, we we finish something, or you know, like the album, it took, took us around one year to 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 do the album. So um, after after finishing, we it's hard for me to remember which how how the songs uh, came to being. So um, of course, there are songs that that you kind of you think they will never work. I think Mother Earth was the first song, and it took quite a while you know we had to to you know let it rest sometimes for for a couple of days because we we didn't think it it 
you know we can make it work and and then this you know then you listen to it again uh, you know a few days later and then you then there's just some some little element that makes it work you know and then it's and then there's uh, there are songs you immediately immediately know it's it, that's it you know there's this little spark you know from from the very first you know day you know so it's very uh, very different sometimes you really know during the writing process oh it's gonna work perfectly and then there are songs you know you have, that need some rest you know and, and you need some, some distance to the song and uh, work on that later to see if it if, if if it works or not this is probably a difficult question but if both of the songs are your children and only one of them can live which would yeah. you save <laughs> Ah, it's so hard because uh, you know uh, I don't dare say anything about that because <laughs> you know it's you know once once it's out there you know we we don't we don't feel it's ours anymore you know it's it's it belongs to the people and they should kind of decide you know we 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 are very democratic about this also you know in in you know in our in our team you know with with our manager and 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 the and the label you know we we ask them a lot you know what do you think you know because we are so in you know, in this, you know, we, we cannot we cannot um, evaluate it uh, in a really objective way. You know, whatever means objective mm -hmm. in in music. You know, there's no objectivity, but um, it's it's hard to say because when, when I you know when I read on the internet, everybody loves Frozen Silence and they they say it's 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 so special and so so great. On but I also understand the people who say maybe it's 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 right for the Eurovision because uh, it's 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 such a Quiet song, actually, and and very you know like relaxing song, and not like a song you can put on put on a big show, you know, with uh, thousands of dancers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and the people like to see uh, uh, on such a show. But but maybe that makes it special, maybe that makes it uh, stand out. I don't I don't know. It's hard it's hard to say. But you know, if I was I, if I was to choose the song, I, I probably would maybe would would choose Mother Earth because it's such a huge arrangement, it's such a huge huge song, and it's it has some some epicness uh, about it but um i'm not the one to decide and I, I don't want to decide it actually <laughs> uh some have said your music uh, reminds them of a modern version of enya uh who are your <laughs> musical inspirations oh actually um i would say um enya is definitely an influence um especially when it comes to to how she uses choirs so we like to use a lot of choirs and and, and we use a lot of mm, you know, like choirs on the mm, and we used that a lot because it it it, it worked in, in many of our songs and and we, we we did it over and over again because we love it so much when 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 uh, when we have those choirs. So so she's definitely definitely an influence. But we try to to um, yeah, it we are always concerned about how 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 would it how does it sound? You know, in a in a, in a modern way. You know, we we don't want to. We don't don't want to sound dated, you know. But at the uh, on the other hand, it's it's um, it has to connect with the with the nature element. So it's 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 hard to it's sometimes hard balance, balancing out those those elements. But um, we're also very influenced by by eighties music, you know, like the uh, um, electronic music from the eighties. Maybe it's not so visible or, or you know audible <laughs> actually <laughs> in in the songs. But there's some elements that we use here and there, rather subtle, I would say. And for, well, um, of course, you know, Enigma, another German project from from uh, you know very successful in the 90s also yeah i think we have a little bit of that influence as well but we're huge fans of m83 as for instance we we love we love that that uh the last album and um yeah a lot of a lot of stuff maybe that's not so so you know so obvious you know like uh uh commercial Great. Now, Amanda has a lovely voice, but a lot of our readers are wondering, do you and Andreas sing? And when can we hear a duet? <laughs> well, actually, um, I, I sing a lot on the album as well, but, but rather, you know, like choir voices and stuff like that, or like a second voice, stuff like that, because um, I, in, in a lot of our, our productions that we also do for other artists, I... I I um, I lend my voice for for different purposes, but but uh, we think 
for for this project it's uh, it, it's really important to have this special voice and i don't consider my voice uh, you know like very special you know in in that regard <laughs> so we 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 yeah so we look for for singers who who can provide that feeling that we were looking for and um so we leave the main main singing part to a man <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your song, this year, your songs are this year um, very new age and definitely different from the stereotypical Eurovision songs. Um, do you think Europe is ready for your new age sound? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it's kind of funny. We're, the first time we 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 read new age, I, the first thing I had to do, I had to Google new age to see what they <laughs> mean, <laughs> because we actually we don't consider it as new age, even though it sounds kind of cool. Yeah, but. <laughs> Um, uh, I think, you know, like um, during the last years, you know, uh, the Eurovision got more and more diverse, you know, many, I think there's nothing that cannot happen, you know, in the Eurovision these days. So I think anything can happen. And to be quite honest, you know, when we were asked uh, to participate in the in the Eurovision contest, of course, we said, oh, yeah, yeah, why not? It would be didn't expect them to come back to us to say oh yeah you're in in, in the in the uh, you know like in the <laughs> preliminary rounds we were kind of a little bit oh uh, okay so because we just said yes because we didn't think they come back to us to 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 um to say yeah we're in you know so <laughs> uh, we were a little bit surprised about that because we we don't consider us an you know like classic uh, eurovision act but uh, we're happy to to have Uh, yes, yeah, such you know enormous positive feedback so far. So um, I think anything can happen. So we just give it a shot and we just try to have a good time and uh, um, do our thing and hope the people like it. When we published your names on our website, our readers were quick to point out that you are the genius behind Betty Dietrich's La 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 from 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Did that experience encourage you to enter this year? Um, well, um, you know, like in hindsight, I would say, I would say, uh, yeah, well, we have a little history with the Eurovision, so maybe it's like a next logical step to maybe to, to just have it a shot, you know, with this project. But, um, it's, it's, it's more like, it's, it's, it's more like a, like an accident, like an accident, <laughs> I would say, because we didn't, you know, we didn't plan on it, you know, we, we, you know, the, we, we've been working on, on the album, you know, for a year now, over a year, actually, so back then, when we started uh, uh, Fahrenheit, we, we didn't think of, of the Eurovision at all, you know, it, 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 you know, it happened like, like one or two months ago, you know, when everything was already finished, so, um, Uh, but but of course um, uh, we have a little history, so you can't deny that. <laughs> <laughs> Going into 2013 selection, uh, La 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 was a favorite of our readers and many betting agencies. Uh, did it hurt to lose? Oh yeah, of course it it, it always hurts, especially when you when you see so many people, you know raving you know having you know getting raving reviews, uh, you know, on the song and. Um, uh, so it, it, it was it was almost a little shock, I would say, because um, we had really good 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 feeling about about all this. Uh, but but back then, um, the voting process in Germany was was quite different from now. I think because back then there were like three different phases of voting. You know, you could vote on the internet, and we were quite. We're doing quite well in that regard, and um, I don't remember the telephone voting was also okay. But but uh, but we had the jury. We had like a jury of um, you know consisting of like different German artists and 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 ex so to speak experts, you know. And they they didn't vote for 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 Betty at all, you know. They we got like zero zero points, you know. And it was it was kind of was kind of disappointing. Of course, everybody was disappointed back then, yeah. Those jurors were just threatened by her talent and your song. <laughs> yeah, many people said that. You're like, oh, she was the only one who could he could compete. You know, uh, with 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 uh, uh, who was it? Cascada, I think, back then. And but, but she, what can you say then? You can say, yeah, well, but, but um, it was not. It was nothing. You know, we could do. You know, so it was just like like it was. You know, back then. And uh, but like, I think they changed this this 
procedure after that, you know, and there was no jury involved uh, last year, I think. And this year there won't be a jury involved at all, I think. It's just, it, w it will be pure uh, uh, telephone voting, I think, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. So and we'll see what happens. Eric, do you think that attitudes toward Eurovision in Germany have changed since Lena won in 2010? Um, well, I think maybe there's a, there's a little little gain of confidence, maybe you know, but but also a lot of um, I think maybe the pressure got a little bit higher, you know, because because they see okay, where we we can win this thing, you know, and uh, it's it's <laughs> it's not impossible to win for Germany, even though we tried so many times before. Um, but I wouldn't say that that you know, Lena changed everything, but but she. You know, she made a great experience, a great uh, appearance there. Um, but I think everything changed with um, with um, earlier. I know there there's this this um, TV host Stefan Raab. I don't know if you're familiar with him, and he did a lot of um, of these uh, of uh, you know of the artists you know that that uh, participated in uh, in recent in recent uh, Eurovision contests. Since he took over this um, this whole thing in Germany, it got a little bit, you know, more modern, you know, not so not so tamed, you know. So he was a little bit more. F he was, he's a funny guy, you know, and he he himself uh, participated in the in the Eurovision contest. I don't I don't know if you remember him. He was this this Vada Hade Dudeda guy <laughs> with this, you know, with this lights, lightning. Now with this jacket full of lights and all the the seventies attitude, so I think since he took over and he was also involved, uh, of course, in this uh, selection of of you know of, of Lena because it, it was like a casting format in in, in German TV, um, and she she won this and uh, but before that he he already uh, had a lot to say about um, uh, the Eurovision and and um, yeah. Pulled, pulled many strings behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, you recently collaborated with Emily de Forest on Wildfire. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was it like working with her and has she given you any tips about your revision? <laughs> no, how could she? Because because back then, you know, it, it was, it was I, I think it was August last year, you know, with summer. And uh, it, we didn't even know that they were in it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, we couldn't know back then, you know, so uh, no, <laughs> but uh, it was great working with her. She, she's very professional. She came in and she's, she's very, she's very, um, um very, yeah, it's very precise, you know, how she sings and she really tries to, to, uh, you know, to, uh, do all these things, you know, that, that, that we told, uh, that you tell her, you know, when you say, oh, maybe can you try this? And she really, she's really precise, you know, when it comes to her singing performance. And also, you know, we, we, um, shot this little uh, teaser video for the internet, uh, for wildfire. And she, she really, uh, she really thinks about what she's, what she wants to do and how she wants to do it. And she, she has a really, she has a clear vision of herself, how she wants to present herself, and that helped a lot. Did you ever consider using Amelie instead of Amanda for the voice of your Unser song for Osterreich songs? Um, no, actually, we never thought about it. Of course, it's it's kind of obvious now, but but um, you know, once we once we decided, uh, you know, uh, for Frozen Silence as the first single, we 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 thought it would would be kind of odd to to change that and then and. and uh, and we actually we we didn't really think about it. It was somewhere, you know, in the air, and maybe people were exec expecting us to to uh, to you know announce, okay, well, we we gonna we gonna perform with Emily, <laughs> but uh, it, it it never really crossed our minds actually, even though we knew it was it was you know the question was kind of in the air. But um, no, and, and I, if if I read if I read it right somewhere, you know, Emily once th said that she she doesn't want to to uh, take part in this uh, in the Eurovision uh, contest again. Uh, but I I don't know if it's it's just something that I read, so I don't know if if, if that's true. But um, no, we 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 never thought about it actually. <laughs> Do you have a message for your fans and our readers of Weebly Blogs? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, hello, uh, I'm Eric from Fahrenheit, and um, 
we hope you vote for us. Um, we hope you like our songs and our music, and um, have fun this year. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. Um, so um, stay tuned. <laughs> Vielen Dank to Eric. You can watch him and Fahrenheit and their singer Amanda compete in the final of Unser Song für Österreich on Thursday, March the 5th. If you want them to sing at Eurovision, we kindly ask that you pick up your phone and vote. But before then, you can visit their Facebook page at facebook.com slash Fahrenheit and keep up to date with the latest Eurovision news on weeweeblogs.com and weewee.tv. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we wish you all the best and see you later. Thank Thank you. <laughs>